Guys, what's going on? It's Joe from GadgetryTech.com, and today we're gonna do a quick unboxing of the Xbox Series X. Now this was obviously purchased, this was not sent to me for review, but I wanted to unbox it and show you guys in case you were on the fence for any reason uh, between consoles. So obviously the Xbox Series X, this is the newest one, it's $499. They have a Series S, which is less if you don't want the uh, 4K 120 hertz support. Now I'm probably gonna do a video on this because 4K 120 hertz is really not possible on gaming monitors right now because you need a monitor with HDMI 2.1 and over 120 hertz. This outputs that signal with HDMI 2.1, not DisplayPort. Most gaming monitors that support the 120 hertz and up 4K are because they use DisplayPort. Modern smart TVs do have the HDMI 2.1 and will do the 4K at 120 hertz. However, uh, look at this bad boy, it's open. That is a nice, Small refrigerator. <laughs> uh, it's an interesting packaging compared to the Xbox One X that I bought, which was uh, a lot more simple. This is a little bit more elaborate. So we'll open that up. It says, power your dreams. But anyway, the uh, if you have a smart TV, a new one, it's HDMI 2.1. It'll have the 120 hertz or higher panel, depending on how good of a quality television you purchased. And you can run it that way. Now, the only disadvantage of the TV, of course, is the increased input lag. Um, so this is, let's see, this is a getting started card, it explains the ports. We're gonna go over that in a moment and show you the ports up close. But for now, let's just unbox and see what it looks like. We'll save the best for last, I guess. This is gonna be a short video, guys. I'm not one to waste your time if you've watched other videos in the past. HDMI 2.1 cable included. So if you do have a smart TV that is 4K at 120 hertz or up, this cable is ready for that. And of course, if you upgrade your gaming monitor, you can do that too. Now this will uh, run in 60 hertz mode if you do not have a 120 hertz capable display and you can still take advantage of 4K at 60 frames per second. Uh, power cord, the good thing is, I like this, this is the same power cord that the Xbox Series X uses. Uh, I love that because um, I tend to swap consoles around a lot and I can have one plug to power either one. So that makes life really easy. Let's look at the controller. Core's about six feet long too, both of them, it's, it's pretty normal. I think sometimes the HDMI cables are eight feet, this could be, but probably closer to six. So, new and improved, um, very, very similar feel to the Xbox One controller. They have a much better texture on the bottom, that's the first thing I noticed, is a lot more grip. Uh, ooh, they improved the triggers, guys. For an FPS, I wish they had trigger locks on a stock controller so you didn't have to buy the Elite 2. Um, but the button feel is way, way better than the Xbox One controller. Honestly, these triggers feel better than the, the, my Elite Series 2. Um, they have like a rubber stop. It's not a hard landing, so it's nice and smooth. It feels great. And the bottom of it still uses all the stuff that's compatible with Xbox One. So again, I love that Microsoft is kind of doing this evolutionary approach rather than ev uh, revolutionary. So a lot of your stuff will work. D-pad is revised as well. Feels very different. It's a bit stiffer. Uh, there's less play in it. Honestly, even the dead zone is less on this too. I wonder, you know, aside from losing the paddles, this almost feels like it, it would be a little bit more competitive from the stick and button standpoint than an Elite controller. It does have a direct share button now. That's huge. No more double tapping and hitting X if you want to record the video. You can tap that and assign it to perform your media sharing function. So I love the controller. Honestly, if this is the direction they're going with this, I'm I'm already very, very excited to see what's new on the Series X as far as uh, not only specs, but the configuration and layout. Um, this is just a regulatory guide, not really any value for me there. And that is it. So we've covered the accessories. Very straightforward, just like an Xbox Series One, or yeah, see how this is happening. Xbox One, um, the only difference is the packaging. Power cord is the same, HDMI cable is upgraded. Controller is way, way better than the Xbox One. <clears throat> Now I've heard that if you had a ping pong ball, when this thing fires up, if the fan's spinning, it'll levitate a ping pong ball. I don't have one, um, unfortunately. Those, those days are over, no more beer pong here. But this thing is a freaking monster, holy cow. I'm gonna grab my uh, Series X too and I'll show you the difference. But lo and behold, here we go. And I'm gonna use a controller for scale. So if you could see that, that is uh, roughly it's actually almost the exact same width as the controller. The controller, if anything, bleeds out by about, I don't know, a centimeter. <laughs> it's, uh, it's only about a quarter inch 
wide. Uh, I'm not great with metrics, so don't roast me if I'm way off on that. Uh, single, see this, this part I'm not a huge fan of guys and I was concerned about this and it's disappointing. You have a single USB 3.0 up front or 3.2. I'll have to check the specs. I don't know if they'll tell me on the packaging. It just says USB. Um, it's going to be at least USB 3.0, which is fine. That'll give you 500 megs a second on an external if they ever enable external um, storage. However, for peripherals like a wireless headset, if you had bought the new Astro A20 Gen 2s, you would plug your transmitter in up front. Chances are it'll perform better. Now what frustrates me is if you are playing with a friend and they also have a wireless headset, you only have one front USB port, the other two are on the rear. So again, I don't understand why it's still only three USB ports. New headsets like the Turtle Beach Gen 2s, um, the 600 and the 700 Stealth series, um, those do direct pair, there's no transmitter. So you won't tie up any of these three USB ports. I think it's like 180 to 200 bucks for an additional one terabyte expansion uh, module or storage module. It is NVMe, so you will get really good performance. But that is that. No more HDMI input. This is just an HDMI out. So your media pass-through capabilities from the Xbox One days are over. And yeah, so you got power cord, ethernet, two USBs, HDMI, the expandable storage, which they call you know, storage expansion, simple enough. It'd be interesting if these light up. No, they're just textured. So there's dots to so you can feel which is which. That's really cool. Microsoft has spent a lot of uh, time focusing on people with disabilities. Uh, that new special controller that they made that is customizable for people with different physical disabilities is great. And the fact that they put these dots on the back to help you understand what is what. It's not braille because it's just one dot, two dot, three dots for USB. Um, one wide one for HDMI, single dot for power, two dots for Ethernet, three dots for the USBs, and four dots for the expansion. Um, that's awesome. I mean, it's this little attention to detail. They really care. So <clears throat> this little slot, that's a Kensington uh, slot. So if you are concerned with theft, let's say you're in a dorm uh, and you don't want someone to yank your console, this isn't like a bulletproof way to secure your uh, console, but it does make it much more difficult where people can't do a snatch and grab. So Kensington has these little cable locks for like 20 bucks. You put them in, you lock it, you can do a key option or a combo and then you secure the other side to a post that isn't removable or screw it into something, whatever it is. So it's cool that they have that. These vents on the top are big. This thing moves a lot of air. So I'm noticing a few things. <clears throat> you have this big vent on top, it curves in slightly, uh, which is kind of nice. And then there is a little vent on the back uh, to expel even more heat, I guess. For some reason, they felt that was necessary outside of here. It may be because if something's on here, it's just kind of a last resort. If someone sets something on top and forgets, at least this should give you some thermal capability. And then there are inlets on the bottom here. You can see the power supply on your right, if you will. Um, and then on this side here, it's just open. I can see, I'm trying to see if I can tell what is what inside for components. See some ribbon cables. There's a lot of space. Honestly, I'm really shocked at how much space is in there. I mean, this thing's massive. You'd think it was because of necessity. I guess it's more for thermals. So anyway, all your air gets sucked in from the back right here and the bottom. This is not a large, uh, this is a big rubber circle, but there's not a lot of open holes on the bottom. A lot of it is sealed because you can see other components like the disk drive. Uh, you can actually see it kind of fill up that side. So the intake side, it's, it's tighter than expected. The heat sink, runs inside here going up. So it's a smart, smart design, don't get me wrong. I think uh, the PlayStation is taller and obviously wider, but it's not. Like this one is wide, tall, and thick. The PlayStation is a little bit skinnier, but it's taller and deeper. So in various applications, it may work. Now, the Xbox gives you four rubber feet or rubber circles, if you will, half spheres on the side. You can lay it horizontally and that's what it looks like. Honestly, I, I'm not a huge fan of laying it horizontal. That's massive. It may not fit in some storage shelves, but it's not too bad. Uh, it is big, not very deep. And then if you need it for your desk space, thermally, this will perform much better vertically. Um, it's designed to flow air up. And for my desk, it's great because the old Xbox that I had laid flat, it was, it was better suited for that. Uh, this will kind of tuck away in the corner more. So overall, um, <clears throat> 
I like a lot of what they did about it. I, I, a large fan, by the way, versus one or two smaller fans that spin re really fast. This is going to be much, much quieter uh, at load. So the, these new things are so powerful. I mean, the fact that it can do 4K at 120 hertz, this is like 70% cheaper than building a computer to have similar specs. So for 500 bucks, it's a steal. And they got it all working with this singular airflow design, kind of like what the old Mac Pro uh, used to do, the, the trash can one. So it's, it's very efficient because you can make it compact and you can keep the noise down, which is remarkable for how much uh, power and heat this thing will put out. So we are going to fire this up. Uh, I'll probably do a follow-up video on this, but for now I wanted to <clears throat> show you the unboxing, show you what the accessories are, so you know exactly what you're getting. And if you guys have any questions on this portion uh, of the Xbox, feel free to shoot me a comment below. This is a very straightforward video. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited. It's, it's pretty heavy. It's noticeably heavier than the Xbox Series X. And you know what, give me one second. I'm gonna grab the Xbox One X and we'll jump back and I'll show you um, what that looks like next to it. All right guys, so I grabbed the Xbox One X to put next to the Xbox Series X. No idea why they decided to do that numbering or naming convention. It's pretty ridiculous. But anyway, as far as height goes, now the One X, it's, it's almost identical. I mean, you're talking like a millimeter taller on the Series X. So pretty much identical size. Now we're gonna show you the top view when I do that. And that is the difference. Let's see if I can get that on camera. So uh, Xbox One X is, a, is noticeably deeper. I'd say about 35, 40% deeper than the Series X. Obviously extremely skinny. So when you lay, lay these flat, let's put this the right way. I don't wanna drop this. So if I lay this flat or horizontally, let's put that correctly. Massive difference there. Depth wise, massive difference. It is a, a totally different design. And this was, they got away with it because uh, they weren't as powerful, obviously, so they don't generate as much heat. They had a pretty efficient cooling design, even on this one. It's a massive exhaust on the side, uh, much better than the original One X or Xbox One that launched. So anyway, about the same height, but this thing is a brick. I mean, you could do some damage with that. Anyway, guys, that about covers it. That's how they look next to each other. I'm excited to boot this up. We're going to do a software update because knowing Microsoft has been several in the past few days. We'll make sure that gets up, and then we're going to start uh, playing some games and see how the performance is. So thank you guys so much. If you have any questions, shoot me a comment below. Please subscribe if you want to see more. We're busting out stuff. I have so many headsets that we're going to be testing on this. Um, I've been buying extra uh, products to go with it, different gaming headsets, whatever it is, because there's... You, you, I want to test everything and really give you a fair opinion on that stuff. So anyway, I hope you guys found this helpful. Again, shoot me a comment if you got questions. I'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye.